Hello, what is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you look are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match review of Chelsea's 1-0 loss to Valencia at Stamford Bridge in the Champions League. Dreadful scenes, a lot of stuff that went wrong, stuff I'm going to get into in today's video and talk about generally what Chelsea are going to do moving forwards. Before we do get into today's video, I do want to ask you guys to subscribe to my channel. Please do hit the bell notifications icon and I ask you this because I upload every single day content for you guys. I don't want you to miss it, so please do subscribe and if you want to help me out, please do like this video. Alright then, Stamford Bridge Champions League. The anthem was back hopes were high speculation on what Frank Lampard was gonna do was a, an interesting one I did go to the game so it was a bit annoying to watch such a frustrating performance but I had a nice time I hung out with both George Benson and Eunice insert photos here cool we had a lovely time that was fun nice to hang out with the boys but yeah frustrating result and to be honest right Valencia is supposed to be in turmoil the coach who was loved by all you know, the fans, the players, he was sacked for non-footballing reasons. Loads of controversy there. A new coach was brought in who was a little bit like a man at a funeral. And basically, this could have gone both ways as both media players and Chelsea coach Frank Lampard were speculating how either they'll collapse or they'll galvanise themselves as a team and perform well. Now, I think they did perform pretty well there at moments. Generally, they didn't have the better of it statistically in the game, which I'll talk to you about in a second. But I guess the hope they just held on, but Chelsea gave them that hope, in my opinion. And it was such a frustrating performance. And anyway, you know what? Let's bring up the analysis screen and get into it. Right then, on the graphic next to me is how both teams lined up in this game. And like I assumed, Valencia played that 4-4-2, the same 4-4-2 that they got batted with against Barcelona. It was the two up front, like I assumed, of Rodrigo and Kevin Gamero. And you had that familiar face, Cochran, playing in the midfield, who I'll talk about for a moment. He obviously put on that horrendous challenge on Mason Mount that took Mason Mount out of the game early. I just want to say... I don't think there's anything malice in that um, challenge. I don't think he wanted to hurt the kid. Hopefully Mason Mount's all right. We're going to hear about that. But he got an immediate yellow uh, in the stadium. I couldn't really see it well enough, but on the replays, it's pretty shocking. But like I said, I don't think it's anything deliberate. And hopefully Mason's okay. Right then, so Frank did deploy the free for free that worked so well last time out against Wolves. Zuma came in for the injured Antonio Rudiger and when Mason Mount came off early in the game Pedro came in to replace him which I actually think hurt Chelsea quite a lot. Now I speculated Chelsea would play a 4-3-3 before this game and Pulisic and Giroud would come in and I genuinely thought Tammy would be arrested for the Premier League and Giroud would be really good in the Champions League. I've kind of been talking about that for a while on my channel, but you know what? Looking back and in hindsight, I understand why Giroud and Pulisic weren't played, and I'm still not sure this is going to be the case, but I would not be surprised if both Giroud and uh, Pulisic started against Liverpool. Now, I actually think, to be honest, Tammy Abraham will continue to be given his chance to play against Liverpool, but I, I understand maybe the thinking for Frank Lampard of him trying to emulate the exact same lineup that Chelsea used against Liverpool in the Super Cup. Because Chelsea played so well against Liverpool then, and many have said Chelsea were the better team in the larger spells of that game. But I didn't really want him to play this 3-4-3, and I really didn't think he would in this game. Sure, it worked a treat against opposition that play a back three. Remember, I've said to you guys before, when Chelsea were doing so well under Antonio Conte, they struggled when the opposition went to a back three. So it's kind of the counter to that formation, or maybe the counter to a really attacking high press team, which Valencia were not. They were happy to sit without the ball for most of the time. Chelsea did not look vulnerable generally in this game defensively. They were quite solid, but for me, it was pretty toothless for a lot of reasons. There were shades of Antonio Conte's second season at Chelsea where lots and lots of wide systemic play and nothing really else. I mean, there was a lot of shots in this game from Chelsea and I'll bring up the stats shortly. But for me, the ball just kept going out wide to either Aspilicueta or Alonso and it wasn't even playing cutbacks, they were playing crosses. Just sort of toothless crosses and, the, the, you know, Giroud wasn't playing. Maybe Giroud should have come on really, really early instead of Tammy and just try to constantly get in the air and win headers. But for Chelsea, 
they took a lot of shots, but it was all like, I'm, it's almost like the coach Frank said, you know, take shots whenever you want, you know, because I kind of feel like there's a bit of a laissez-faire coaching attitude from Frank Lampard when it comes for, to midfielders taking shots, a bit like Frank Lampard used to. But generally, it never felt like offensively like this was working. Chelsea may have had the better of it in many metrics, many stats, but certainly at the stadium as well, watching the game, it just felt like nothing was going to happen out of this. Sure, there was a few chances, and Willian, who um, is often targeted by a lot of Chelsea fan base, he was probably the most creative player on the day and probably put in the most threatening chances. But to be honest, it didn't look like he had anyone that really was on the same page as him in terms of combining with, and I don't actually blame Willian for that. I feel like he needed to be making those kind of moves and assertions to actually break down the side and do something a bit different. So I do feel like Frank Lampard got it wrong. I feel like he should have seen what was happening maybe 50 minutes in, give it a few minutes into the second half and switch it up. But he was persistent with it and it was just the same sort of patterns of play that really was underwhelming and didn't really ever inspire confidence in that this was going to be you know, work essentially. I'm incredibly excited to have Frank Lampard as the Chelsea manager and I think he's a really intelligent man and probably will be a very intelligent manager. But I think in this game, he might have bottled it a little bit. I think he saw the 3-4-3 work so well defensively. He probably thought that we've been shipping a lot of goals. I mean, you could say this is pragmatism. Let's do that again. Let's not lose at home. We're yet to secure a home win. Let's just do that and try and, you know, be really tight and score a goal. I feel like he should have backed himself, played the 4-3-3 or the 4-2-3-1 and tried to just win, go out and combine and, you know, essentially assert themselves on the opposition and it wasn't happening. Alonso and Azpilicueta saw far too much of the ball. I guess that was the game plan, but when it's almost like the opposition was happy for them to have it and nothing really came of it. Lampard did change it though. He brought on Giroud for Zuma, I think it was, and went to a... 4-4-2 diamond. Chelsea did shortly concede afterwards, but I don't want to attribute that to um, the formation change particularly because of the way the goal was conceded. Um, I don't really sort of connect the two. So I do like how he changed it, but it probably happened too late. And Barkley came on for Kovacic and there's a bit of controversy with that. But to be honest, Kovacic made a couple of good runs, but for me, he was really underperforming on the day. I, I, I'm a big fan of Mateo Kovacic. I was watching him um, gave the ball away a few times and apart from a couple of like good pool, ball progression runs and dribbles his combinations weren't there and really I found him quite ineffective. I actually would have put Barkley on sooner because the biggest problem in this game was Chelsea were not playing between the lines. Chelsea were playing on the really wide flanks with the wing backs um, and they were trying to cross in in a game like that against a counter-attacking 4-4-2, I feel like you need to try and combine between the lines. Um, Kovacic wasn't doing that. William was trying. He was trying to combine with Tammy, but it wasn't really happening. Barkley does like to play between the lines. He is quite a technical final third player. He, you often, you know, people criticise him for lack of end product, but he can dribble around the end of the area and combine with people, retain possession. He can play between the lines. So, although he hasn't been amazing recently, Barkley. He can do that as a player, and I would have liked to see him come on earlier. Which brings me to the penalty. Chelsea do get a penalty. Um, it was a handball in the box that, watching back, was probably a penalty. And Frank Lampard has protected Ross Barkley here and says, when he's on the pitch, he's my penalty taker. No story there for you, press. You ain't getting a story out of this, which may or may not be true. Obviously, uh, Chelsea fans and just people who've watched Chelsea should be like, Jorginho's on the pitch. He doesn't just hit them hard, he waits for the keeper to move, and therefore his conversion rate is pretty immaculate, much like Eden Hazard. So Jorginho should have taken that penalty, I'm pretty adamant he would have scored it, and then perhaps heads would have dropped in, Val in the Valencia squad and Chelsea could have gone on to win that game, I genuinely believe. But no, Barkley skies it and it's uh, agonising and then, you know, it was frustrating to watch from there. I don't think the refereeing in this game was particularly good. I feel like um, it was actually pretty poor, to be honest. And Chelsea ultimately end up losing 1-0. Right, let's switch the graphic over to the statistics. Valencia only had two shots on target, and Sod's Law, they scored from one of them. Typical. Out of Chelsea's 22 shots, Chelsea only had six shots on target, which is really, really poor. Um, to be honest, when you're taking that many shots, you've got, you've got to hit the target. I know a couple were just shot wide or side netting, but still, you've got to, if you're going to 
going to be trying to aim for the onion bag that much. You've got to be hitting the target a bit more. As expected, Chelsea had the Lions' share of possession with 60%, but in modern football, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Interestingly, Chelsea conceded loads of fouls, 24. But you know what? Although Chelsea probably were frustrated on the ball and therefore conceding silly fouls, again, on what I watched it in the stadium, a lot of those free kicks were silly. Chelsea did get the ball and the ref was blowing up all the time. I would not be surprised if perhaps up to like eight of those plus maybe were probably not free kicks and probably not fouls. And Chelsea had 10 corners to Valencia's too, but again, like the wide play with the wing backs, pretty unthreatening. Corners were pretty unthreatening. Willian was on them again. I'm not going to hate on Willian this game because I actually think he played very well in large spells, but still very underwhelming and hit the first man on a couple of corners, which is a bit of a meme now. But to be fair, if Mason Mount was still on the pitch and was not injured, he would be taking the corners and perhaps things would be different. All right, so I do want to talk a little bit more about what this means for Chelsea, Frank Lampard and the team essentially. So I'm going to take away this analysis screen. So guys, a frustrating evening at Stamford Bridge. But you know, it just goes to show anything can happen in the Champions League. It's frustrating because Lampard is still without a home win as Chelsea manager, which seems a bit silly now, but I feel like it could come. You look at Liverpool, they lost 2-0 to Napoli. I actually watched those highlights. It might have been a bit unlucky, to be honest, or slightly poor finishing, and one of their goals they conceded was a penalty. But it just goes to show the Champions League is a cruel mistress. Ajax won comprehensively, and you probably would fancy them to be the favourites in the group now. Chelsea really need to win away in Spain, or at least get a point there, and do the double over Lille and get something out of Ajax. They need to try and come second in this group, but it's looking difficult already. They've done themselves no favours by conceding three points at home off the bat to one of the three favourites in the group. The thing is, I don't want to be all negative about this because Frank Lampard is learning on the job and this is a valuable lesson. He will look at that back and to be honest, Chelsea were and are hamstrung with injuries. No Emerson, so you understand maybe the left wing back situation with Alonso. Kante's got to come back into the team. Rudiger was obviously massive. You've got Loftus-Cheek, Hudson-Odoi. Players like Loftus-Cheek and Hudson Doy actually, they would have been perfect in this game against Valencia because they're the kind of players that like to play between the lines, dribble, take on players and pop off shots into the corner. You know, that was cry that game was crying out for a bit of that, essentially. And if Chelsea played a conventional back four system in that game with Emerson at left back, and who knows, Reese James at right back, the game would have been a lot different, in my opinion. But yeah, Frank Lampard's still learning. He's trying out a bunch of formations, you know, and anything can happen. Who knows, Frank Lampard might get his first Chelsea win at home in the Premier League against Liverpool. Wouldn't that make headlines and make you forget about this poor result? To be honest, Chelsea don't really need to win against Liverpool. If they just put in a good performance and show a bit of themselves and you know, maybe, who knows, get a point, that would be huge for Chelsea at the moment. But injured players to come back in, the coach learning on the job, still generally positive, and the players, um, there's still a feel-good factor. I watched the interview with Tammy Abraham after the game. He's sombre, but he's already talking about taking his aggression out on Liverpool. So hopefully Premier League comes back, Chelsea do well, and if they don't win, then you would hope they get their first win against uh, Groomsby Town in the League Cup, because if Chelsea don't win there, I'm going to be angry. Anyway guys, what do you think? That's the end of my review video. If you've enjoyed it, please do like the video. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Get down in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the game. Do you think Frank was naive? Do you think he got it wrong? Do you think he was forced into playing that formation again? Do you think we missed Mason Mount or whatever? Just give me your thoughts on the game. Follow me on social media as well, guys. Why not follow me on Instagram at footballyannick and Twitter as well. Other than that, I'm out. Keep your chin up. Keep the blue flag flying high, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby